Walker with us now, former policy director for Mitt Romney, senior advisor to Marco Rubio, and research fellow at the Hoover Institution, Lonnie Chen. Lonnie, do you think that President Trump's summit with Kim Jong-un is in jeopardy, or is this just um, gamesmanship that we should expect? Well, Dagan, I think this is, frankly, the kind of gamesmanship we should have expected, although one thing has become abundantly clear. The North Koreans are an unstable partner to be having these discussions with. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have the discussions with them, but fundamentally, anybody who thought that Kim Jong-un was going to be predictable or trustworthy, uh, they need to take a second look, because this is a guy who, over the years, has made promises and not kept them. So I think we have to be totally aware. We have to be eyes wide open. But I do think that the uh, discussions are ongoing, and I think June 12th in Singapore is still likely to happen. But, but he's trying to regain the upper hand here. This is a negotiation tactic, Dagan. Lonnie, James Freeman here at The Journal. I uh, wanted to get your take on trade. I, I don't see a lot of reason for optimism. You look at the Chinese negotiations, I'm not seeing us get any improvement in the way they treat our technology companies. I'm looking at NAFTA, and it's a lot of talk about uh, the government telling companies where they can build stuff and how much they can pay. Is there any hope here that these various negotiations actually lead to more open markets? Well, that, James, I mean, that's the question, right? We cannot have this negotiation with China for the goal of a short-term uh, resolution of trade deficit issues. This has got to be a longer-term discussion about what the Chinese have to do to open up their economy and fundamentally to have a different model. Look, if we don't address the piracy of U.S. intellectual property as part of the deal, this is a big problem. This negotiation cannot be about the short term. We've got uh, in Washington this week Liu He, who is one of the top Chinese economic officials. He's here to continue negotiations with the Trump administration. I hope that they continue to press for systemic reform as opposed to a, a short-term sugar high when it comes to our trade situation with China. Lonely, it's Lindsay Bell here. I have a question on the ZTE uh, transaction. Do you think that that's really a fair trade or, uh, you know, letting them get back into business here, bringing their business back into the U.S., but in exchange for agricultural relief? Uh, well, is that fair? Well, the, the big issue with ZTE, and this is something that Marco Rubio has spoken about a lot. Look, uh, ZTE is a, is a company that does business in China. The problem really is that they have technology that could potentially be very problematic for the U.S. If they are allowed to get their technology here into the United States, uh, they're going to be able to potentially infiltrate uh, infrastructure here in the U.S., infiltrate national security concerns. So ZTE is, is more than about just a, a dealing with a company as part of this trade negotiation, it's bigger than that. They really do pose a national security risk. So I think we have to be very careful when we talk about ZTE and we talk about concessions just to help the Chinese out. Uh, that I find very worrisome. Uh, Lonnie, it just looks, everybody I've talked to, it just looks like such a national security risk. This handout to ZTE, it's uh, owned by the Chinese government. It's owned by a group of co uh, companies. Some are defense companies that it opens up the door. We're talking about, there are words used like espionage related to ZTE and even Huawei. They're not, uh, those phones aren't even sold on military bases. And General Jack Keane was on with Maria yesterday and he said that he was stunned to hear this. It just seems like such a bad idea. What do we get in return for it? We literally go back to where we were, the status quo on agricultural tariffs by China from where we were even in February. So what, whose cockamamie idea is this? <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, Dagan, this is a thing. The, the suggestion that we would benefit from this, I do think, is highly problematic because the issue with ZT, you know, look, there was a hearing recently on Capitol Hill where all of the intelligence chiefs were there, and Senator Tom Cotton, my old friend, asked this question to them. He said, would any of you ever purchase or own a ZTE product, and nobody raised their hand because ZTE is in the business fundamentally of espionage. And so uh, I think we have to be very careful here. And, and you make a good point, which is that the concessions we get on agriculture aren't even that great potentially. So uh, we got to take a good look in the mirror here and say, what is our goal coming out of these negotiations with the Chinese? The goal needs to be, let's get them to behave in a different way. Let's get them to join. If they want to be open, open markets folks, if they really want to have this discussion, great. But they need to be committed 
to protecting U.S. intellectual property and not conducting economic espionage. James, you mentioned that President Trump, like no other president in recent history, has really stepped up and honored his campaign promises most recently. Well, it was announced, yeah. it was announced well, last well, that, year, but moving yeah, the no, embassy to Jerusalem. That's Jerusalem. what makes me so nervous on trade and immigration. That, uh, you know, I, don't, I don't see the, uh, the upside here. I thought the, the uh, administration was moving toward focusing on Chinese intellectual property theft, mm -hmm. opening their market to our companies, not making our companies share our technology, our trade secrets, do joint ventures. But, uh, Lonnie, I, I'm not seeing that anywhere in these negotiations. Now, you know, maybe I guess the, these meetings with Lou Hu this week will change things. But uh, so far, that seems to be completely unaddressed from what I can tell. Right. And, and unless this is one of those things where there are discussions going on, we don't know about them. Um, I, I do think, James, at this stage, it is a little bit early for us to judge where these things are headed in the final analysis. I'm hopeful that there are people in this administration who understand the need for us to have uh, real reform if we're going to have this discussion with China. I do think there are people in this administration who are committed to that point of view. But, but what we cannot have is we cannot have short-termism in this discussion just for the purpose of improving uh, the trade deficit potentially with China in the short run. Fair enough. This is part of the negotiation, Lonnie. I lost my mind over some of the stupid ideas that were floated about the tax reform. <laughs> and I would come on this program and just rant and rave about it. And most of them didn't wind up in the, the final tax law. So I, I'll, I, will, I will concede that. Lenore, do you have a uh, question? Yeah, Lonnie, this is Lenore Hawkins. And one of the things I'm looking at when we're dealing with China, I'm very concerned that we don't end up just costing consumers more, that we don't end up opening these markets, and that all we end up doing is putting more and more upward price, pr price pressure on the things that we import, which is makes consumers have to pay more out of their pocket. How do we avoid doing that? Now, I, I know that Trump is very good at kind of throwing these threats out there, but how do we end up not harming ourselves? Well, Lenore, I think that's a great question because this has always been the reason why uh, I've been a free trader, why I think open markets are the right answer for a growing and prosperous economy here in America. Because Fundamentally, the reason why we engage in free trade is because it helps us to acquire the goods we need and want at a price point that our consumers can afford. Now, there is an argument to be made that domestic markets should be protected mm -hmm. to a certain degree, but we've got to be careful about that because if you take it too far, you are going to see upward price pressure. I think consumers are going to demand change in that situation. That the question is how much more are we willing to pay? That's the question. But, Lonnie, free trade, vote for Trump, was not his slogan. I know. I know. <laughs> Just, uh, I know. I won. <laughs>